how do you do? I'm Patricia Medina, your hostess for this performance at the Playhouse. Our drama is set in the beautiful city of Lisbon, Portugal. And the time is 1940. A time when Lisbon was almost the last port on the continent that offered escape to the victims of war in Europe. A small piece of neutral ground where men at war with one another walked the same streets, ate in the same cafes. Paolo's Cafe was the meeting place for foreign correspondents of the world's papers. Here, Lisa de Beck, the girl whose part I play, is writing to the British pilot she married only two weeks ago. Coming over here to Paola's after filing my story for the day, I looked down toward the harbor where one of our British planes landed. And I know that next to it, on the quiet waters of the Targus, there are planes with a Nazi swastika on them. How strange. When not many miles to the north would these planes wreak destruction on one another. the bag for the love of Pete. Reed Wilson, I didn't know you were in Lisbon. I'm not. I mean to say I'm just between planes. I suppose you're covering this beat for the wire service, huh? Yes, sit down. Gosh, there's nothing I'd rather do, Lisa, but I've got to make a call at the consulate and I've got a story to file. Oh, you've got a moment? <laughs> All right, just for a minute. Good to see you again, gal. You look more beautiful than ever. <laughs> not beautiful, but happy, maybe. Hey, you and Jeff. Yes, two weeks ago in London. Wonderful. Jeff's a great guy. If anybody deserves your death. Well, I'm the lucky one. Did Jeff get any kind of a leave so he could have that honeymoon in the country you're always talking about? Well, he had two weeks, but it turned out to be two days. The second day when we were coming back from a walk, the most heavenly walk, he got a wire and had to return to his base. And you went right back to work, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too bad. But you still got your honeymoon to look forward to. Oh, yes, of course. You on your way back to the United States? Yeah. Away from this nightmare to your wonderful, peaceful America and to your girl. What girl? Oh, she wouldn't be very flattered to hear that. I don't know what girl you're talking about. What girl you told us about in London. Remember the night Jeffrey and I celebrated our engagement? He asked you if you weren't in love too and you said yes to the most wonderful girl in the world. Did I really bear my soul like that? Mm -hmm. But didn't I also say she couldn't see me for dust? Oh, who could know you and not love you? Well, my paper back home for one if I don't get its story on its way. Wonderful seeing you again, Lisa. You too, Reed. Safe journey and happy landing. Thanks a lot. The best for you and Jack. Thank you, darling. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Friend of yours, Lisa? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, he is. He's just stopping by for his daily carrot. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You hungry, any? Pleasure, oh, senorina. Oh, excuse me, senora. Thank you, Miguel. Here, you want it? All right. Thank you. Jeffrey, my darling, there is music in the street now. Everyone turns and lifts his head at the sound of it. Peasants in town for the day smile as they wander by. Only the foreigners. The refugees hurrying from consulate to cable office. Only they do not hear the music. Or perhaps they do hear it. But far back in their memories. Oh, my darling, surely all this will be over soon. Hello, Chuck. Hello, Lisa. What's the matter? Something's wrong. There was cable for you at the consulate. It's from the air ministry. It is from the Air Ministry, isn't it? Give it to me, please, Chuck. Lisa, maybe it's just a...
Cigarette? Thanks. It is very good to see you again, Senor Wilson. Oh, thanks, Miguel. How long it is you are away, Senor? Ten months, no? Hmm, since I was here for any length of time. But I did stop by and see you in May, remember? Uh, see, si, see, si, you did. You're going to stay now, I hope. Mm, maybe, who knows these days? Uh, who knows indeed? Okay, Reed, how about some news from home? What's the real dope on how they feel in Washington? Does anybody still think we can stay out of this ruckus over here? You know as much about that as I do, Chuck. Well, look who's here. Why, Reed. Hello, Chuck. Hi, Lisa. So you're still in Lisbon? Yes. You back here to watch the drama from the balcony, as it were? How are you? Oh, fine. How's Jeff? Say, look, excuse me, Lisa, but... Yes, Chuck? Well, the toys I had sent over, the dolls and things. Oh, yes. They arrived here yesterday. Good. I'll send your hotel for them. Heck no, I'll bring them up. That's wonderful. <laughs> Don't mention it. Reed, now that you're here, I'll expect you to send home some things from my refugee house. Oh, I'd love to. Of what refugee house? The one on Avenida de la Libertad. It has big columns outside. You can't miss it. Do come and see us. Goodbye. Oh, brother. What's the matter with Lisa, Chuck? She doesn't sound a bit like her old self. I didn't realize you hadn't heard about Jeffrey. Jeff? Are they sure? One of the other planes in his group saw his go down like a flaming torch. It was his first mission out. Poor Lisa. You never saw a gal like that. She stayed locked up in a hotel room all day. Next day, back on the job. Didn't say anything about Jeffrey to anybody, and nobody dared say anything to her about him. It's awful what it's done to her, Reed. Maybe you didn't get a good look at the expression in her eyes. What's this talk about a refugee house? Well, Lisbon's the last gateway to freedom on this battered continent for refugees. Lisa did a lot of work for them before Jeffrey was killed. But since then, she's been working like ten people combined. Dashes off a story to a paper, interviews a couple of migratory potentates, then back to the refugee home to bathe and feed a bunch of hungry young kids. They're all asleep, sister. Good night. Hello, Reeve. Did I come at a bad time? No, not a bit. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten. Would you like to go out for a while? I'd love to. The children are asleep and sister's just taken over. I suppose Chuck told you, didn't he? Yes, he did, Lisa. There's nothing I know how to say. Thanks, I'd rather you didn't. I wouldn't have mentioned it myself, only I... I just received a package from the Air Ministry with some of his personal belongings. His cigarette case. Empty because he could never remember to fill it. His mother's engagement ring that he used to joke about. All the money in the world couldn't buy it now. And so little money bought it then. Photographs of his family. Letters from his family. Letters from me to him. You don't mind my telling you all this? Don't be silly, Lisa. I'm only glad if you will. I never want to forget what I thought and how I felt as I opened those things. Jeffrey and the men who died with him, their business used to be life. I know that one of them had a wife and the other two had sweethearts. And none of them read. None of them were meant to die as they did. No one can tell me there's any shadow of sense in what happened. No one can tell me that this story, repeated in thousands of other lives, either has sense or is inevitable. I see it now as a grotesque and ridiculous fantasy. A terrible game we all play in dead earnest. And I know as sure as I know that you and I are here in this room, that one day the generations will look back in amazement. They won't believe it was possible. And then it won't be possible again. And what about you, Lisa? Me? I don't know. Did you ever start to read a serialized story in a magazine and then, and then never get to finish it? Yes, I guess so. I did that once when I was very little. The magazine stopped coming to our house right in the middle of the story. I've always wondered what the end would have been, but I never forgot how beautiful the beginning was. Jeffrey and I were very happy. Now there isn't going to be any end to that story. You're a remarkable girl, Lisa. 
There's only one argument I might offer. I see no more sense in what's happening than you do. But if you could see the time ahead when humanity is going to live according to the rules of sense, or democracy as we call it at home, then you might concede that the lives of Jeffrey and the rest have helped us take a few steps forward. Words, Reed. Those are words and ideas. Jeffrey's gone. I'm sorry. That was a fool thing to say. Excuse me, please, Miss Bell. Yes, what is it, darling? It's the new little Dutch girl. She's crying in her sleep. I think she must be dreaming about the bombing again. Oh, I'll go and see her. Reed, this is my little friend, Hester. This is Mr. Wilson. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? Oh, how do you do, Hester? I'm very glad to know you. I'll be right back. Excuse me. You're an American, aren't you? Yes. I'm going to your country as soon as they find room for me on a boat. Well, good. We've lots of room in America for nice little girls like you. Say, Reed, it's about time you and I were getting over to that reception they're holding for the visiting brass. You ready to go? No, as a matter of fact, I think I'll skip it. Well, what's the matter with you, Reed? I've never known you to turn down good free food. Oh, I don't blame you. What are you talking about, Chuck? Well, it couldn't be that you're waiting for one Lisa to Beck, could it? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Uh... I don't know why I mentioned it. You've been meeting her here every day for the past month. Nothing to it. After all, everybody hangs around this place. Oh, sure. Keep up the good work. You've had a miraculous effect on that gal. She's coming back to life. You're crazy. Maybe. So long, Chuck. So long. Oh, and I must remember to tell you, thanks a thousand times from Hester. I wish you could have seen her face when she saw the doll. I'm glad she liked it. Any news about a chance of getting to the States? I'm afraid it's not too good. The people who are going to take her are ill, and heavens knows when she'll get there now. I only wish she could take my place in the clipper. But I guess it's not as simple as that. Your place? Yes, I'm leaving next week sometime. Oh. Your paper's calling you back? Yes. I hope you'll come and see us again soon. We'll miss you. I'll miss you, Lisa. Sometimes I don't think I can stand living on the edge of all this misery one moment more. I wish I were going to America, too. Well, why don't you come up only for a while? You need a rest from all the work you've been doing. Don't be silly. How can I go to America? Marry an American. Marry me, Lisa, and go home to America with me. Oh, I don't think I've got any wild illusions about it. I've thought about this before, quite a bit in the last few weeks. Can I at least talk to you about it? There isn't anything to talk about, dear. It's a very gallant proposal, and I thank you. Oh, I know it sounds silly from your point of view, but I hope to heaven you see there's some sense to it. I'm not going to let you throw your life away in that ridiculous fashion, if that's what you mean. The answer, therefore, is no. Well, what's wrong with it, Lisa? Everything, of course. You'll have to be more specific than that. All right, then. I'll be extremely elementary. To begin with, is the girl you're in love with. And that's an argument for my side. How can that be an argument for your side? Don't you see it makes us equal in a way? I didn't want to talk about it. But you realize that I know how you felt and always will feel about Jeffrey. Well, you've lost that love. And that girl you mentioned, she doesn't love me. Then she must be an idiot. Not that I mean to insult her. No, I, you shouldn't do that. She must be an idiot anyway. OK, we'll let it go at that. Now can we start over again? All right, if you insist, but... Am I crazy or do you like me? You're not crazy. And you know I've always liked you. And when I think of how often I've seen you in the last few months, I'm going to be a darn lonesome guy when I leave this place, Mr. Beck. I'm going to miss the sight of your remarkable face, the sound of your voice. And I'm going to miss the companionship of a pretty remarkable gal I've been lucky enough to see quite a bit in the last few months. Lisa, don't you think that two people like you and me... Well, for instance, sometime this blasted war is going to be over. What are you going to do then? I don't know. Where would you go? To England, to Paris? Oh, no, I, I couldn't do that. I don't mean to be sentimental, but it just wouldn't be right for me now. It's like going somewhere because you like the hotel or because you enjoy the music. If the hotel's torn down or the music isn't there anymore, well, there just isn't any point in going. And that's my best reason for wanting you to come home to America with me. Make a new start, Lisa. Doesn't it make more sense for us to try and make one good life together instead of leading two half lives? 
I don't know. But even if it were possible sometime, I just couldn't leave my work now. Oh, for Pete's sake, Lisa. No, listen to it practically. Suppose the only thing I did were to change six babies seven times a day. Listen, it's I know how much work you do up there. But certainly that's one place where your qualifications aren't unique or indispensable. Anybody else can flip those kids in and out of dry clothes as well as you can. Actually, I haven't done much of that. But it isn't as easy as you think to get people to help. Reading to the children, for example. Not everybody likes doing that. And it does mean so much to them. But you do. I do what? Like to read to the children. Of course I do. I love it. You see, I couldn't leave them now. Even though I am very tempted to accept your most gallant Oh, proposal. quit calling it that. Lisa, will you make a date with me? <laughs> well, I certainly hope I'm going to see you again before you leave. No, I don't mean that. Will you meet me here at Paolo's five years from now? Five years from now? And that'll be February 1946. The war should be over by then. Oh, I hope and pray the war will be over a long time before that. Well, let's say we'll meet here the first February after the war's over. And if neither one of us has fallen in love or otherwise been entangled by then, you'll marry me? All right. It's a bargain? It's a bargain. And in the meantime, in case you've forgotten, I've been invited up to the refugee house tomorrow evening for tea with you and the kids. Oh, yes, they've been counting the days. going to be a very bad storm, aren't you, Mr. Beck? Yes, darling, I'm afraid it is. Perhaps I shouldn't put on my new pinafore. Good heavens, why even not? Well, Mr. Wilson may not be able to get here if the storm doesn't stop. Then we won't have a party. Well, we'll see about that. I used to like a storm. Yes, I used to, too. Don't you anymore? Not very much. Neither do I. It sounds too much like the war. I think we should get away from this window. Oh, no, please. I want to watch it. I don't want anything to happen that I can't see. I suppose we're safe enough behind this big wall. It was in the dark that they took my father away. I didn't even get to say goodbye to him. You mustn't think about that anymore. It was night, too, when the bomb fell on our house. I didn't know anything until I woke up in the hospital. I know, darling, I know. They told me it was my mother who found me and pulled me out. Even when she was so badly hurt herself. She died before I woke up in the hospital. Hester, your mother was a very brave and a very wonderful woman. How could anyone be that brave, Misty Beck? Because she loved you, darling. Much more than her own life. Do you think that God is punishing the people? I don't think so. I think the people are punishing one another quite enough as it is. My mother and father are in heaven. I think they'll ask God to protect us. Hello, Reeve. Oh, Mr. Wilson, you did come to the party. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone that, honey. I wanted to make sure you were all right. Uh, look, Hester, I, I think I heard some of the small children crying in the nursery downstairs. I'll bet you could be a big help to the sisters in keeping them quiet. Yes, I bet I could. Go along, dear. What is it, Reed? I'm afraid this thing's going to do a lot of damage, Lisa. We just received a hurricane warning. Can you take any more children up here? Why, yes, of course, if it's necessary. Good, then prepare every bed you can lay your hands on. We'll need it. And I'll see you later. All right.
away from the window, dear. Do you suppose the lights are out all over the city? It's hard to tell in a storm like this. I wonder if the children upstairs are frightened of the dark. Oh, I'm sure they're all right. You know, it's hard for me to remember the time I was as small as those children upstairs. Well, of course it is, Hester. But you must realize you're almost two years older than they are. Here's a little girl we dug out of the rubble of a house. I think she's more frightened than she is her. I'll take her upstairs to Mr. Bake. Did she lose her mother and father, too? No, they're... Still looking for them. But I think they'll find them all right. And if they don't, she'll be alone in the world. Nobody's ever alone as long as they have friends. I'm alone. No, you're not. There's Mr. Beck who loves you very much. You like Mr. Beck, don't you? Oh, yes. Well, then, she's a friend to you, but she too needs help. She's all alone. Were her mother and father killed? No, but somebody that she loved just as much. Her husband. Now, Hester, she feels the same as you, that she's all alone. You should be a good friend to her. She needs one. But she has lots of friends. You and Mr. Wilson. I only have Mr. Beck. You mustn't think about that. I want you to remember this, though, that as long as you have one friend, you'll never be afraid. You mustn't be afraid of the storm. Bad as it is, it still does some good. You see, when the storm's over, the world is fresh and new and clean. times in the last few hours. I wasn't so sure about that. Good morning, Miguel. What's this, senora? Senor? I see you got off pretty light. Oh, we do not have too much damage here. I fixed cafe for you right away, eh? Oh, oh good. Those are welcome Thank words. You. Now, will you promise me you'll get some sleep? I don't need any sleep. All I need is a bath and a change of clothes. I'm going to have to appoint somebody to keep an eye on you after I'm gone. Chuck, maybe. Reed. Uh -huh. I don't want to wait those five years. I want to marry you now. Well, that is, of course, unless you've changed your mind. Lisa, look, in a way, I have changed my mind. I had no right to ask you to marry me at all. I told you my paper called me home. They haven't. I'm going home to enlist. I don't see how America can stay out of this thing much longer. That's all the more reason I want to marry you now. Darling. Remember a few months ago when I talked to you about Jeffrey's death? Remember how bitter I was? You tried to make me see there was some meaning in his sacrifice, and I just couldn't see the truth of it. Well, I think I do now. It's such a simple truth. Love for others. But like Hester's mother, it has to be a love greater than your own life. When Jeffrey was taken, all I could think of was that my life was over. In a way, it was. But I have another one to live. And I need someone to help me live it. I need you, darling. And I love you. And need I tell you you're the only girl I've ever loved? But how can I ask you to go through that uncertainty again? If America gets into... I'm not afraid. We'll live one day at a time and have faith in the future. We'll get married, and I'll work wherever I'm needed. And I know... I know one day we'll have a happy life together. You and I, and, and how about Hester, too? Oh, Reed, thank you. I do love you. I do. 
And now, on behalf of the Playhouse, may I thank you for being with us. This is Patricia Medina inviting you to join us again next week. Goodbye.